Hey guys, can I tell you about my friends at Solid Roofing? These guys are incredible. They are top notch. They have got everything that you're gonna need to make your roof look incredible for the holiday season. Give them a call today at 918-809-2234. Wouldn't it be nice to know that your contractor is also a licensed insurance adjuster because that's exactly what Solid Roofing has. Give them a call today. 918-809-2234. Solid Roofing. Welcome to the Northfield Radio Program, ladies and gentlemen. I hope your holiday season is in full swing and you're enjoying everything and every opportunity for this holiday season. Merry Christmas. I know sometimes it can be a tad bit strenuous and a tad bit crazy during this season, but I hope that you find Jesus to be the glorious, sovereign Savior that he is. I hope that you place your trust, your hope, your everything in him this season. May he be the gift that you find your comfort and your solace in this year. Hey, if you guys are still trying to find some last minute gift ideas, may I humbly suggest Outpost Coffee. These folks have everything from gift cards to they have t-shirts and sweatshirts now. Go check them out at outpostcoffeeco.com. So this week I get to sit down and talk with a friend of mine, Coach Lee Blankenship from Bartlesville High School. He is the new head football coach for Bartlesville High School and we just got to sit down and talk about life and family and school and all the kind of fun stuff and, and the holidays and all that. I really hope that it encourages you guys as you go into the holiday season. And if you like this thing, share it with your friends. So enjoy this conversation with Lee Blankenship. Hey Lee, how are things going in your world? Man, great. Great to great to be able to come back on with you again. Man, I'm so excited that you've come back to, to sit down and talk to me and and uh, just share what's going on in your life. How things been going? Well, starting to slow down a little bit now, <laughs> I guess, as, as much as a, a, the coaching profession, things can slow down. Right. Um, finished up our season, had our awards banquet. I'm in the process of, uh, of nominating kids for the All-State team and cool. uh, working on college recruiting, trying to help our kids get recruited and, and make sure that they uh, uh, are taking care of business in, in order to sign on signing day. So there's a lot going on. We're already making plans for coaches clinics and off-season awesome. football, a lot going on. So when does let's say let's let's flush out coaching clinics? What is that? Okay, so uh, coaching clinics are basically um, uh, all the coaches in an area will get together and there's guest speakers and nice. Uh, yep, yeah, just professional development for coaches. There's there'll there'll be speakers on different topics and there'll be vendors there trying to to sell things. They have them all oh, over yeah. the all yeah. over the country. Okay. I like to take my staff and have you got and, a date for that nailed down yet? Or are you guys still working on? Yeah, that? well, we're we're working on the locations that that we're going to go. There are clinics. Um, usually, clinic season is is late January to okay. uh, to early March. So very cool, very cool. So what? Uh, last time we talked, we we had sort of a preseason. Uh, you just slid into Bartlesville. Things were going good. We you know, everybody's excited and everybody's fresh, you know, yeah. fresh off the train. You've got a season under your belt. How do you feel? You know, one of the uh, one of our goals this year was to fill up the corners of the stadium, and it was really cool. Just talking about that excitement and and uh, people coming and and uh, being interested in what we were what we were going to do this mm -hmm. year and what we were bringing and and uh, to look up into the bleachers and see. You know the corners of the stadium filled uh, in several of our games this year. They were packed. Really, yeah, man, it was. I came to it several really myself. Special. So there, uh, well, when you we had uh, we had you helping us out in a, in a yep. big way, uh, giving us some motivational uh, speeches Holy before God. our games. And you know what's crazy is these young men have because I've been out in town and and just you know different places. They'll see me and they'll holler my name. And they'll just be like, hey, you know, there's one fellow at Walmart, he, and he'd come over, and he'd just give me a big bear hug all the time. And just, I mean, it's just Very so cool. crazy. They're just like, man, we just love you. When you coming back next season? I'm like, well, if the <laughs> coach will have me, I'll come, Absolutely. man. Absolutely. Just, just big old big hugs. It's crazy. Man, like, that, that age group of young men, they're, they're, they, we have such a platform yeah. as coaches just to impact them and, and their lives and, and their hearts and their minds in a positive way. And, Absolutely. and that's something we really, really take seriously. I, I love, like – Everybody that I met this season, when I come in and sit down with all those guys, every coach that I met, every assistant coach, all of them are just top notch. We have a I ha we have a great staff. Um, 
man, you know, I think we talked a lot about in the the last time I was on just about what we believe about success, the difference between mm -hmm. purpose and and goals, and uh, you know, we didn't meet all of our goals this year, and that's 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 okay, you know, it is okay. A, a lot of coaches look and and they go, you know, we didn't win the state championship, or we didn't win our district, we didn't meet, we didn't win ten ball games, or or and, and all, they they start looking and they see all of these different goals that. Um, that weren't met and and it's easy to look at, at your season and go man we weren't successful this season mm -hmm. but that's not how we define success we exactly that's our success is based on our, our on what i call our our purpose as a coach sure. it's, and and as a man of faith man i believe that's why god has called us to this community mm -hmm. um so we, when we start looking and, and seeing character development our kids are, are saying yes sir and yes ma'am uh you know huge. they're yeah, they're 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 uh, they're treating uh, or, or, or addressing and treating people with respect. You're seeing leadership growth, yep. um, success yep. in academics. Perfect, um, love it. You know, th those are things that that we're going to define success by. And and we had a, a, a very successful season this year. They really, I mean, I, I had a conversation with uh, a couple of different students that, that come to our church and that are affiliated with our church, and they said, man. From this season, from last season to this season, it's just been just like a 180 shift in the mentality of all the students. Like the entire school feels different. And I'm just, you know, and I'm telling, I, and I've said this, you know, I said this in all my school talks that I've said one person can transform an entire society. You know? No doubt about it. And that person's not Coach Blankenship. That person is Christ. <laughs> well, I, I, yes, absolutely. Jesus is the one who makes the, the shift. But he uses us as his tools. Absolutely. And he's and he's using you as a tool to impact young men and young women in Bartlesville and, and not just Bartlesville, but in this this whole county, Washington County, Washington, Osage County. You are your name is is become synonymous with um, character and leadership. Well, that's that's uh, I'm honored, and uh, you know if people people really saw me, they'd just see an old old filthy sinner, man. <laughs> yeah, and, hey, and, man. Uh, Aren't we all? Uh, well, absolutely, we are. You know, at Bartlesville, I, I love our school and our community. There's so many good people, and yeah, there so are. many great teachers at our school, and mm -hmm. and uh, that just love kids, and and so many that that love the Lord. And our administration is phenomenal. Yep, uh, it's really a a, a blessing and a, and a privilege for me to be able to work. At it's such a great, such a great school and such a great community. Yeah, absolutely. So, I, I want to let's just go personal. Let's talk about. Yeah, you're married. How long have you been married? <laughs> you can ask me that on the radio. About man, that's that's yeah. that's tough. I hope my wife isn't listening here. Uh, oh, let's boy. see. We're here going we go. on seven years now. Okay, so. marriage. Seven years of marriage. Thank you for putting me on the spot, <laughs> honey. I love you. Um, wasn't Ke Caleb didn't give me that that prep question? It wasn't so. on the it wasn't on the sheet. <laughs> Seven years of marriage. Gotcha. Yes. Gotcha. Journalism Seven right years. here. Yes. Um, okay, you got kiddos. At two boys. Mm -hmm. um, got Cole, who will turn four on the twenty seventh of this awesome. month. Um, and then Clay, who turned one uh, in September uh, of of, uh, of this year. So How yeah, fun. That's yeah, so they're awesome. they're Henri, they're all boy, and and uh, now now I'm a big John Wayne fan. This is a side note for you. So. All right, Pilgrim. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> uh, um, I I for some reason, you know, I, I don't know if it just runs in our family. My uncles liked it. My my grandpa, nope. you know, loved John Wayne, and and as a kid, I, I love John Wayne movies. So absolutely, I uh, I've got uh, <clears throat> our our football players. I started it with Cole and just just in an effort to you know toughen those boys up and 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 uh, you know if they just got a little bit maybe the maybe uh they'll be interested in the duke one day but they uh <laughs> I, I i've convinced my football players when cole was born to, to start calling him rooster you know after nice. rooster yeah. cogburn yeah. from true yep. grit and i figure if if you got a name like rooster you got to be tough you know it's and, true story so yeah absolutely true grit too <laughs> um, and, and then and then clay they call him duke you know so yep. I, I so i figure you know I, i'll give him at least That's try awesome. to make a nickname stick it really hasn't stuck that much my wife hates it but but uh, you know I, I love john wayne and and uh, he's real american man's man true and, story and uh, maybe maybe the boys maybe something will rub off hey man that's <laughs> can't can't go wrong with that you can't go wrong with the duke i mean he was <laughs> that's right he was awesome i loved him all right so i saw a hilarious picture your wife put on social media of because this last week was the ou texas game yes and i okay and here let me okay so i don't understand because i wasn't paying attention to because i'm i like sports but i'm not like dialed in as much and there was i guess there was some sort of a 
stink over the horns down yes. thing. What what was what was so the the Big Twelve, which is mm-hmm. the conference that OU and Texas play in there. You know they're yep. playing for the conference championship uh, last week, and they uh, Lincoln Riley made the comment on one of his radio shows that um, the Big Twelve informed him that if any of the OU Sooner players gave the horns down sign, which is almost like an unofficial OU symbol, mm-hmm. you know, yeah, right. Um, that, that they would be penalized for it. So the Big 12 oh just gosh. warned him that that couldn't happen. So he was asked a question in one of his you know radio shows, <sighs> and he mentioned that, and it just caused a huge uproar on social we media. Live in. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Man, there were some hilarious videos and stuff being put well, I out. I saw your wife. Like, okay, so your wife had on University of Arkansas, so I'm assuming that she went yep, there. my wife. And this right, was a, a young a, picture of both of you. Oh, this man. This was pre-beard. I, I, was and... like, I was like 70 pounds lighter back then. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, is... When I first saw it, I was like, well, who? Are those, those two? And those I was like, are oh, actually um, like our, our engagement pictures. So, was it really? Yeah. So those are our uh, those those photos that, that, that are are way old. Um, <laughs> yeah. She's a uh, Abby. My wife graduated from the University of Arkansas, and you know, obviously, I was a walk-on quarterback at, at OU. Yep. So um, when when we were doing our engagement pictures, we just did you know just for, the thing just that united you guys <laughs> together. <laughs> exactly. Bring Texas down. <laughs> That's right. So <laughs> she thought it appropriate to make that you know her profile picture that's for awesome the big 12 championship week especially in light of that that news that you know oh Lincoln man Riley. and they did and i i listened to, to a little bit of the game on the radio and and it was great i loved it i mean yeah great game you know we're in oklahoma come on and and here's the i my family bleeds orange so we're osu folks and yeah, that's just that's i mean wrong with that at all. and there's and here's the deal i'm i'm that's default if i walked in, in crimson because I have no fight in the game, really. But my dad went to OSU. My wife went to OSU. My brother-in-law went to OSU. So I just sort of kind of, you know, that's just how things sure. go in our world. But, you know, I'll root for OU, especially if they're playing Texas. State pride, man. Heck yeah. State pride. Heck well, yeah. I'll, I'll root for anybody. Being a, being an OU guy, <laughs> I'll root for anybody when they're playing <laughs> Texas. Texas. Right. But, but uh, yeah, I'm, I'm with you. I'm a big state pride guy. I root for, for Tulsa yeah. and yep. and uh, when they're playing. And, and obviously, I'm a, I, I follow Oklahoma football and a big fan of of, uh, of, of what they're doing. And, and uh, but I, I also love the Cowboys. Shoot, I'm I'm missing a finger, man. I probably I love Stillwater. I probably would have fit fit in better at at o- Oklahoma State than at OU, anyways. I I uh, I'm kind of a cowboy at heart, you okay, know. Okay, so you I want let's hear the story because you brought the finger up. Okay, yeah. How, how'd you lose your finger? Okay, well it was a horse accident. I I, uh, <laughs> I, hate I told horses. you I'm, oh my I'm a I grew up in a in a small town and and uh, growing up my my parents had uh, had cattle and and yep. we actually at one time had. Uh, uh, 30 brood mares and, and my my dad and my uncle together um, raised quarter horses and and uh, anyways long story short I, I was uh, uh, it was an accident um, with some friends one of my friends was loading a horse in the horse trailer and and uh, he handed me the lead rope through the horse kind of reared up on him and was acting up as a real young horse in the trailer we had just been horseback riding I was actually uh, uh, a sophomore in college. It was right after my sophomore season at, at OU. It was, we played in the bowl game like, uh, you know, late December and, and then early January. I'd just gotten home and that's when it happened. Just, you know, horseback riding with some Golly. friends. But the uh, rope wrapped around my finger. I was, he was, he handed me the lead rope. And I was standing on the outside stories. of the trailer. I always hear stories. Like my, when I was growing up, my, cause we, my dad had horses. Mom and dad had yeah. horses on the, and I was like, Horses can be one of some of the dangerous, most dangerous animals, son. Don't now, don't mess around with those horses. And I always heard, heard stories. You know, my my family member got kicked, and you know the things like that. And I, nothing ever weird happened to me except for a saddle like went under the belly of the horse, and I was <laughs> on it. And that was the weirdest thing that ever happened. But I mean. That's great. Did it like come completely off? It or? it was dangling by a by a thread there, and and yeah, we uh, I I gathered it up and and uh, went and and uh, my my dad actually drove me to the hospital and and they tried to sew it back together. I was a college quarterback at the time. I was in just finished, like I said, my second yeah. season at at OU and and I had a couple of surgeries on it and they ended up having to take it off. So Oof. it's kind of my my trademark now, yeah. you know, as a coach. You know, every coach needs his trademark. Bear Bryant wore the hat and. You know, there's different different uh, guys that are, are kind of known for things, and and I guess I'm the just the guy missing a finger. <laughs> so. Missing a finger. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Well, at least at least you've got a good attitude about it. I mean, there's some guys that just like you know that that was that could have been your defining thing that, that just 
everything was revolving around that. I'm like, I can't believe it. You know, I'm over with now. I'm, Listen, I'm done. You know, that as a 20, I was 20 years old when it happened. As a 20 year old kid, when something like that happens to you, um, you know, your first thought, my, I remember, I still vividly remember, you know, I watched it happen and that rope uh, zipping through my hand. And I thought, you know, and I heard the bones start to, to start to crack. And I thought, man, there goes my football career. And, mm. and, um, you know, as a, I, I always, you know, um, uh, I've always known that, um, uh, and, and, you know, my, my, my parents did a great job with, with, uh, with just raising me and my, my younger sisters, just, to to know that God's, God's in, in control and, and he has a, a purpose for us. And, um, you know, football is, is just a game, you know, yep. it, football, I think where so many, so many young parents get, um, you know, get in trouble or, or get it wrong is, is you know, you, you got all these little league tournaments and things that are happening on Sundays and on Wednesday nights, and people make, um, you know, a silly game, a, a ball, their God. And, mm-hmm. and it is, it can be a false God if you, it can be if a, you allow it to. It'll let you down really quick. Well, here's the deal. It'll let you down every time. At some mm-hmm. point, that God fails you. And, and just sometimes as a coach over the course of my career, I've just seen the devastation in kids that, you know, after after losing the game, and, and don't get me wrong, I'm a huge competitor, man. I, I want to yeah. compete. I want to win every game that we play. Sure. But football's not my God. Yep. And, uh, you know, just having that perspective, I, I football's, a, football's a tool. I think God can use the game of football to do awesome things and for him to get glory absolutely and uh, whether you win or lose or or you know or draw and and that's um that's a perspective that was instilled in me from an early age and you know football was my platform now i didn't know god what are you gonna how are you gonna use me now i'm i I can't throw the ball as well as i as uh, as i used to be able to you know that's a pretty important finger for a quarterback that index finger but um you know at the end of the day i God kind of put it in my heart that I need to go back and finish anyway. So I, I actually worked really hard, re, relearned how to throw, and and uh, never could quite throw it as as far or as hard. But um, found a, a university that would give me an opportunity, and wow. and I went and ended up playing uh, quarterback at East Central. I, it took me two years to okay. relearn how to throw, and yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I finished my my career, and I graduated from East Central That's University so awesome. in Ada. So head down, hustle, and got. I mean, and that and you didn't get your eye off the prize. I mean, and and. To this day, your career is still in football. You're making money doing something yeah. you still love. Listen, um, that was a great teaching uh, moment for me. I, I mean, if it weren't for that action, I wouldn't have met my wife. And, and you hey. know, God, God's on his throne. And, and man, I've met your wife. She's plan. she's an amazing lady. Oh, she's so. way she's way better than I am. That's that's uh, <laughs> you married outside your league, bro. <laughs> <laughs> no doubt. In the football world, we we say we outkicked our coverage. There but you go. There that's, you go. Uh, that is uh, definitely uh, what I did. And and my wife, I'm. I uh, I probably don't even stumble into this you know this radio uh, uh, what what are, where are we at right here studio, studio thank studio. you yeah yes. radio studio without without her I mean she, man my goodness she ironed my pants today and mm-hmm. and uh, she's nope. she is uh, definitely the uh, the driving force behind what I'm able to do and I'm so thankful for her but and see that this is the thing that I love if if you're listening I mean the, the conversation that we're having here I love that it's not you said you know. The football can be a really crummy god, and I yeah. and I I did I watched this season some parents how they react when their children play and if they don't do well how they're just they're just screaming and hollering like not in a you're doing it's gonna be okay you're just like you know I can't believe you made that play what is wrong with you and like we're <laughs> and these guys are you know and that's starting like young yeah and then you go all the way, all the way to high school and then they get into their twenties and thirties and parents just sort of kind of well. I don't know. I'm not going to really get that motivated anymore to try to push them to do what they're doing, and we lose focus and, and we're, we're we're driving. Say, get the ball hard, go go go, play play play. And then when it comes to other decisions in life, I'm just yeah, you know, whatever. You know, it, that's that's athletics. You know, the the competitive nature. It's easy for uh, it's easy to get lost. I mean, my goodness, go to a sporting event and and uh, and and just watch and and that's part of the fun. I think of the of the event you know what one of the messages that that we try to get across to our parents and just just to portray to our, our parents is that um you know how how good of a player or how many plays uh you know your child makes that that's not what um what defines you as a parent it's not what um it's not what makes you a, a great parent uh, right. you know what what makes you a great parent is the respect that your young man or, or young young woman has that your your child has towards authority their coaches Absolutely. it's it's how they respond to uh, moments of adversity mm-hmm. those are things that really are a reflection 
reflection of what kind of parent you are. And 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 my goodness, you know, our society, our world has that so backwards. Oh, uh, we do. You it know, is. But uh, but at the end of the day, that's um, you know, the character is is what's most important. And, and that that's that's what I love that you're doing. And like I said, you've you've there's a shift that's been placed in the school system in Bartlesville that just sort of kind of has this character matters. And, and I, I always say it to my boys is, you know, what you're doing when people aren't looking, that's what counts. Yeah. And, and, and you're trying to instill that in these young men uh, when it comes to how they act, when they're, whether they, you know, I remember having that conversation when after their first loss, I said, guys, I, I told you this, this might come. There may be a moment where you lose. You don't just, you know, you don't get angry with one another. And I told him, I said, the best thing you could do is look at the guy that made the, the flop play and figure out a way to speak some sort of life into him this week. Do something that's going to encourage him um, and just love on him as best you can and then see how that works out in the next week. And I think the next week they won. And it was yeah. just like they came back. They're like, oh, my gosh, it was so crazy. And it was like everybody was excited. And it, it that's that's all that that's how how or that's what matters no doubt about it, it you know it, athletics at some point and it's 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 just like we talked about you know it's athletics um football is going to let you down at some point yeah. um you know it, you you're there's going to be disappointments we we tell our kids you know it's, and our and i have to I have to constantly remind our coaches about that too. Sometimes we lose. That's life, and and, and but the lessons that they can learn through a game mm-hmm. uh, to help can help catapult them and propel them and prepare them yeah. for you know the rest of their life. As a dad, um, there are failures and there are losses. You know, almost every day I'm taking L's as a dad. You know, oh my uh, just it but, gets excited more exciting when you have teenagers. Trust me, it's weird. <laughs> I can only. I can only imagine it's that, man. It's going to be exciting. Well, it, no, yeah. I, mean, it's, I love my boys and my girl, and they, and they are doing – if if I could have as much passion for the Lord at 15 that my sons have and that my daughter has at 17, I'm just like, I, I think I'd be at a different spot. <laughs> I mean, I really do. But, I mean, just – yeah, that, I think that's character matters. No doubt so. about it. That's that's the important thing for All sure. All right, so um, you're a pastor's kid. Yes, yeah. That's something you and I have in common. We're both pastors' boys. Um, it's a tough life. It, it's a, it's it's different because <laughs> everybody's looking at you. Yeah, and when you stumble sure. and fall, and you will, everybody's like, "Oh, look oh, at yeah. you! I knew you'd fail." And that's just you know because you, you live sort of in a in a fishbowl. Yeah. Um, how 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 do you think that shaped you? Um, Man, I mean, I'm I kind of live in a fishbowl in my in my profession right now. You know, gr- growing up, I, I uh, as a as a young man, you know, I, I knew that I wanted to serve the Lord, and and I felt that calling. And um, I used to pray, God, please don't make me be a preacher. You know, I, I just saw the I saw the amount of hours that my dad put in, and it, it wasn't a. Uh, you know, we, he might get a phone call. We, we might be sitting down to dinner and, and he gets yep. a phone call and he's going to visit, have to go visit the hospital or, yep. you know, people uh, asking, you know, for favors or, or people in need. And, you know, a lot of times, um, you know, it, it, it's a lot of times it felt like, you know, sometimes our family as the as the preacher kid or, or myself as his as the as the child almost felt like uh, maybe not neglected is not the right word, but no, just I, the, no, the time, no, yeah. you know, and I just I just looking at that and, you know, you you all of the sacrifices and all of the the hard work and there's not mm-hmm. a lot of paycheck that comes, you nope. know, with most uh, most places, especially, you know, in rural Oklahoma, a lot sure. of the, the churches, there's not a huge paycheck. You're not doing I, it for you're not doing, you're, you're not Joel Osteen in it. You're not like throwing <laughs> right. out that cash. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, exactly. Um, you know, so I, as a kid, I just thought, man, I do not want to do that. You know, right. I, I want right. to do something that. And uh, so, you know, as I as I got older and I, I knew I wanted to, to serve the Lord and and uh, just uh, my, the passion the, that I had for football and the, the you know, love, loving to compete and the, the influence and impact that my mm-hmm. that several of my coaches had. <laughs> Um, on me, you know, throughout the course of my playing career, um, I just kind of thought, man, football is football is is something I want to do, and and I uh, really felt called to, to this profession. And as I've progressed through it, I've I've really realized it's you know it's not much different than than what well, my dad did. It's yeah, it you, is uh, not much different than me to be the no doubt, no doubt. Um, there's a lot of long hours, and and uh, you know it's it, it's. Um, 
uh, a profession that that's so rewarding because there's so many people that, that you can help. My goodness, I, last uh, last winter it was actually last February um, I got a chance to preach a wedding. I officiated a, <laughs> a, one of my that's, former players' weddings. He came and, awesome. and asked me if I would if I would do that and was getting married. How and fun is that? Really, really a cool so deal. In so in essence, you I mean you sort of kind of are a preacher. Yeah, yeah. You, you know I'm. Or, I had to get gotta, ordained now get for, ordained. to do that. So yeah, so, I called my dad and asked some asked for some tips and like, hey, you got notes. <laughs> how do you how do you marry somebody? <laughs> so That's yeah, that awesome. was really cool. Okay, so let's talk uh, Heisman Trophy. Yeah, Who, who's uh, now? Uh, you, obviously, I'm I'm thinking you're probably going to run towards, uh, and I'm I'm drawing a blank on the young man's name. Who's, Kyler Murray. There you go. Oh, you yes. And, uh, tell me why you think he's up. Why he should get it. Listen. Um, <laughs> well, I, well, I, I, let me ask. I, 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 here's the thing: I, I don't. Do wanna, you think he should get it? I, I absolutely think I, he should get it. Okay. Um, I, I almost was negative there, and I don't need to be negative about. You know, we've had some defensive deficiencies. Um, you know, at, at OU, and and I'm the last person to to talk negatively about you know a coach or coaching staff. People don't understand the amount of work and and parents that, in the stands saying sure, you could have done that fans, better. OU fans are are uh, oh, are extremely unrealistic sometimes, and you know our, our defense <laughs> has not just has not just played extremely well this year, but. Um, you know, it almost feels like Kyler's had to beat two defenses at, at times, mm-hmm. the 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 opponents and his own. You know, but <laughs> but um, at the end of the day, man, he, the numbers that he has put up, just the the leadership, he he is a playmaker on the field. I think that uh, that the Alabama quarterback, to uh, however you say his last name, mm-hmm. yep, Tiger yep, Tiger yeah, sure. Hawaiian kid, great. Yeah. Hey, and you know what, man, I I loved. After the uh, the national championship last year, you know he went in right at right at halftime and and um, finished the game and won the won the game on a great throw at the end and he just gave he gave God all of the glory and yeah and that's that's platform you know oh, that's, yeah, that's why as a Christian athlete that we should compete so hard um, to for opportunities like that Absolutely. to have a chance to you know the the harder we work the, the more back. games we win no yeah. doubt about it that's a Absolutely. platform we could set up and say say you know this god is god has given me the the ability to abilities. do this and yep. and this this win is great but it's it it's nothing compared to the relationship that i have so with him and that that is uh that is platform, and that's a main reason why you know Christian athletes should compete and work yep. hard, and it's okay to want to yep. to want to win, to win. and be successful. Win. Um, at the end of the day, though, I think Kyler's just you know Tua got hurt, and I think Kyler's just his numbers are better. Uh, man, he's he has been really explosive, um, and is just a playmaker. I mean, the, the awards given to the best best player in college football, and and I think there's a big argument for for Kyler Murray this year. I would I would say that it's without awesome. a doubt. Very cool. Well, thanks so much for coming and talking to me and, and yeah. doing another interview. I, this is, this has been fun. Um, would you uh, pray for us? Yeah, man, absolutely. Cool. I'd, I'd love to. Yep. Father, uh, thank you for Caleb, Lord, and, and for his ministry. Uh, Father, uh, just for the, the, the listeners, uh, uh, Father out there, Father, I just pray that uh, special blessings, Father. Thank you for the the platform that you have given us, Father, with the radio yes, show, Father. Father. As a coach, um, Lord, just the the platform you've given me, Father, just to to uh, to point others to you, Father, to proclaim how great you are, Father, mm-hmm. uh, Lord, for the platform that you've given the, the those that are that are that are listeners to the show, Father. We all have a, a platform, God. You have a purpose for each and every one of us, yeah. Father. May we just recognize that. Not take that lightly, Father, and look for ways, God, that we can just point others uh, to you, Lord. We're thankful for who you are and for what you do, Father. Thank you for the gift of, of your son. Thank you for salvation, Father, as we go into the the uh, holiday season, Father. Thank mm-hmm. you for, for uh, the sacrifice and what your son did for us on the cross, Father, that we can know you, Father. Lord, we just love you, and, and uh, we praise you, and, and uh, we thank you for this time. It's in your name I pray. Amen. Amen. All right, go get them. This program has been brought to you by DSR, a technology company that has been investing in Bartles of a families for over 35 years. DSR, we deliver technology.